Um, when we get nervous, when we're not sure of ourselves, or we've just formed bad habits from a lot of different things in life, we become chest breathers. So you might even notice in yourself or see people where literally they inhale and they go, and literally they're using about the top 10% of their lung capacity, uh, which has no chance to fill a space like this, instead of breathing down to their bellies. Uh, the good news is if you're a chest breather or if you've notice other people, you can retrain yourself to be a belly breather, yeah, with your diaphragm muscle. And I say the good news because when we lay down at night, yeah, our body naturally knows how to breathe correctly. So tonight when you go to bed, just take a feel down here and you'll feel as you inhale, the belly goes up. As you exhale, the belly drops down. If you'll just put your hand on your belly, and as you inhale, just feel how the belly expands. As you exhale, it goes down. And remember looking at that, that center idea earlier, so the three fingers at the bottom of the belly button, then you put your finger there below. If you can go find that spot and make sure your hands are there. And just as you're inhaling, just say it to yourself. Just say, this is my voice. This is my voice. So we can start to think about our breath is breath, or our voice is breath support. Our voice is not anywhere near our throat. The more we can retrain ourselves to think about our breath down here, because these muscles won't wear out. Yeah, we might have like sore ab muscles. That's fine. But that's completely different than having tension in our throats that's doing damage to our vocal cords. I mean, a little muscular tension here in our abs is great. That's fine. So a little more body mapping with those hands. As you inhale, you should be feeling the belly come up. But if you slide your hands down to the sides of the belly, you should also feel those sides kind of expanding, yeah? Especially in that lower floating rib. We have that one rib that's not attached, yeah, to our spine at all. It's just that floating rib that as you inhale, you can feel your sides expand. As you exhale, you feel your sides collapse. Inhale, they expand. Exhale, they collapse. So one way to think about your breath support is I always sometimes picture like this big wine barrel. Now, you might even laying on the back here be able to feel your back should also, as you inhale, your back expands and touches more of the floor. As you exhale, that natural lumbar curve comes up off the floor. As you inhale, the back expands and makes more connection with the floor. You exhale, and you can feel that come off the floor. So just take a few breaths here and try to think about that four dimensions, yeah? Up, back, side, side. Like a big barrel that you're just filling with each breath. And every time you inhale, see if you can expand the barrel more. Got that image of the wine barrel in your head? You know how they have those metal bands around them? Try to inhale and kind of like, like you can hear those metal bands creaking, like they're going to explode because you've got more and more breath in there. So again, the good news is your body knows how to breathe naturally, how to be able to lecture. All we have to do now is keep this good natural body habit alive let's identify this feeling of on support and off support. So you're doing this deep breathing so you can understand what vocal support feels like, all this breath. So the more breath you have, the more vocal support you have, the more vocal dynamics you can create in a space, yeah? Um, but there's a specific feeling that you'll feel when you go off support where you're no longer using all this breath and that diaphragm muscle to support your voice and you then start to add tension in your throat to kind of eke out the last thought, okay? Uh, you'll feel it, you'll hear it, and we're gonna use this exercise where you're just gonna use an S sound, and you're just gonna maintain it for as long as you can, and you'll feel when you run out of breath and then you keep making the sound, that continuation from that moment when you're off support, when you're no longer making it from your diaphragm, from your stomach, and it starts from your throat, that's when you do vocal damage. So I want you to listen to it a couple times, and I'm just gonna use my hand to mark when I go off support, so you can also kind of hear it, yeah? So it's like this.
Hear that little at the end? That's what we do when we lecture all the time. We're, we're trying to finish the thoughts, and we keep going, we keep going. And that keep going is all about this, no longer about this. You do that just a few times, and you've got that tired throat feeling, that tired voice. So we're going to try to, re, we're going to, try to train ourselves to know exactly where that moment is when we're on support, right before we go off support, and then try to retrain ourselves to say, at that moment, I'm just going to, like one little tiny moment before that, I'm going to inhale again and get a new full breath so I'm always speaking on support. So if I need a breath, fine. I'll stop my thought, take a breath so I'm speaking on support. So I'm speaking from here, not from here. Okay. So can you, can you do that? And use your hand. There's something about you know kinesthetic learning. Uh, just mark it with your hand. When you go off, just make that little, it's like a slash. There I'm off. So you're going to take a big breath in, use the S sound, off you go. When you mark it, mark it. You feel a really compressed core, and like I can't push with my stomach anymore. And then I push up here in my shoulders, or up here in the throat, or up here in my chest. Hopefully it kind of feels icky. It should feel discomfort. Can we do the exact same thing, but this time, as you're going, and I know, here it comes, where I'm going to be off support, right, the moment right before I get there, I simply just inhale, and I continue on. So it's important, too, that we train ourselves to come right up to the moment before going off support, because we don't want to come here and <gasps> inhale, <gasps> inhale, <gasps> inhale, right? We want to be able to um, elongate our length of thought. So it's important that you learn right in that moment, right before I go off support, that's where I inhale and get a fresh breath and continue. So can we try that? So you're just going to maintain the S until I say to stop. So don't let yourself go off support. Off you go. OK, so this time we're going to allow ourselves to go off support, mark it, Feel what that's like. Now let's do that thing where we inhale again right before we go off support and continue the S. So you'll just keep making an S sound until I say good stop. Okay? Yeah, so we'll make sure our knees aren't locked. And again, our shoulders are relaxed, our jaws relaxed, our throats relaxed. Remember this thing we talked about? If my head's tilting forward, I'm going to put tension in my throat or if it's back. So try to float your head on your spine. And here we go. Ready with a sustained S and. Keep going, keep going, keep going, just so you feel that. It's a lot of breath. It's a lot of breath going out. Okay. Good, and then let that go. There should be no negative connotations associated at all with taking a breath when you need to take a breath. If you're always speaking from your diaphragm, again, this muscle... You know, it might feel like you did 100 crunches or something like that, but that's fine if this guy's tired. But if this is tired, that's where you're doing damage, and it will take you much longer to recover. You can lecture the next day with tired abs. <laughs> yeah, because I was vocally supporting so well all day yesterday that my abs are tired. Fine, I'm good to go tomorrow. But if I was pushing with my throat, and then I go to bed, and I'm, darn, I can talk like this, and I wake up in the morning, and see these words are gone. You know, without our voices, wow, that's our, that's our job.